Let's see how scratch resistant this is. What is going on YouTube? Thank you so much for checking in to once again another video. In this video, we are taking this box that I built for these two Meso 6.5s. We are going to be going over kind of your options for wrapping a box. And then we are going to be using the Duratex, going over how to apply it and why you should use it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, if I look really dirty and dusty, it's because I've been remodeling this shop all day. So I had already done this half last year. So this half of the shop tore out all the walls all the way to there put up new walls. This time it's actually plywood, so I can nail and stuff to it. And I've built more workbenches and done all kinds of good stuff. So still working on it, but that's why I'm all dusty. But real quick, we are doing a raffle on the Sundown X V3. Tickets are 10 bucks and all you gotta do is PayPal the 10 bucks to me. Have the info for that in the description below. This uh, raffle ends December 5th, 2021. So stay tuned for that, should you miss it. There will be tons of other raffles and giveaways as well. Now, guys, let's say you have built yourself a custom box. You're trying to decide how you want to finish it. Um, there are several options. So I'm going to kind of go over the pros and cons of all of them. First and most common option is to carpet the box. You can get gray carpet, you can get black carpet, and then there's other colors too. But those are the two most common. However, it can be a little more difficult, it can be a little more of a pain, and it is not really weather protected of your box. Should your box get damp or something like that? But if you really like the carpet look, uh, of course, the carpet is an easier way to go. Another option is staining the wood. If you build your box with plywood, you could stain the box. That's what I did to my big box with these 612s in it. Now that is awesome, but if you're doing a MDF box, the standing probably won't look all that good. Another option would be just to paint the box. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. Now, one common thing to do is to uh, rhino line your box or truck bed liner. Now that is really common and a lot of people like to do that. The problem with bed liner is that it does not really adhere to the surface it's attached to, it just adheres to itself. So, as so long as you have everything uh, covered well, it does okay, but as soon as you get like a pick or a nick in it, it can start to peel off. So, I don't particularly like using a bed liner on an application like this. Now, if you wanna get the bed liner look and you wanna get something that is super durable that will protect your box from any dampness or weather that it might come in contact with, you're gonna wanna use Duratex. I've done a bunch of research and this seems to be kind of the best stuff to use. So we're gonna be testing it out today. Uh, I'm gonna show you all how to apply it to the box and we'll see how it looks when it's done. Now I ordered one pint of Duratex. This should be uh, plenty for this box. We'll probably have some left over. It was about 30 bucks. It comes with the little Duratox in a one pint container. And it comes with a little roller as well. Now, of course, we have the uh, normal directions and whatnot on here, but I'll be showing y'all what to do. Okay, once you open this, you'll notice it's really pretty thick stuff. It's not like a uh, paint or a stain. All right, now I have this box flipped over uh, on its head, so it is upside down. This is, of course, the bottom. So first off, we're gonna do one coat on the bottom. We'll give it a nice, decent coat. So this way, once this dries, we can flip it over and we can do all around the rest of it. But uh, yeah, again, for the bottom, one coat will be fine. Now when applying this, you just wanna roll over it lightly. If you push down too much, it'll smear it a little bit. So just get it, roll it over nice and lightly. Now, if you want a more smooth texture, you're gonna wanna lay it on pretty light. But if you want a rougher texture, you're gonna wanna lay it on heavier. Basically, the more Dora texture you use, the heavier you lay it down, the more aggressive of a, of a texture you will have. This is kind of what my bottom layer looks like. Just thick enough that we can't see any of the wood anymore. But we're only, again, we're only doing one coat since this is the bottom. Okay, well now we just gotta wait and let this dry. Gonna go ahead and close this back up. And I'm gonna put this in a plastic bag just so the roller does not dry out before we can put on the next application. All right, now within about two hours, this was probably dry enough to where I could have went ahead and flipped it over, but it was getting late, so I let it sit overnight. But now it is totally dry. It still feels a little bit soft. It will take a few days for this to totally cure to where it is uh, really rock hard, but we're gonna go ahead and flip it over now. Now I've got a piece of wood here that I'm gonna set it on just so I can get all around these edges. 
um, a little bit easier. So we're gonna put on two coats around the rest of it. The first coat is really the main coat that just makes sure that this thing is uh, pr pr protected from any moisture. And then the second coat will be our texture coat. So depending on how we lay that down, we'll determine the overall ending texture of this box. All right, we have the first coat on. Now we just wanna make sure we do get full coverage on this first coat. Don't wanna see any exposed wood. So I did it and I kinda of went back over, found a couple little spots and tried to get everything filled in. So we're gonna let it sit for about an hour, make sure it is dry enough to apply the second coat. And then we'll do that and have her done. Okay, let it sit for an hour and 15 minutes. It is now completely dry to the touch. So we're gonna go ahead and lay on another layer. I think I'm gonna lay on a pretty decently thick layer so it'll really have some nice texture to it. So let's get that on there. Now what I found what works best, let's get a bunch kind of on there. And then you want to go the same direction nice and even across notice if you go different ways it makes the texture kind of weird but if you go the same direction kind of same force you get a nice even texture over the whole thing now i'm just going to let this guy dry overnight then we can put the soaps back in it this box will be done and good to go now this is a decently small box, but I laid it on there really pretty heavy. And we still have like a third of this pint left. I do think this would be enough for like a bigger single 12 box or something like that. Well, the box has sat for over 24 hours and it feels really good. Everything is completely dry and the paint has really uh, hardened a lot. So it feels really, really awesome guys. Very, very, very resilient very scratch resistant. This stuff is awesome. I have it flipped over on its back here. Let's see how scratch resistant this is. Okay, so going over it pretty hard, you can kind of see the swirls there. And there's one little chunk right there where it took it down to the middle, but obviously that was pretty rough on it. And from standing over here, you can't really even tell it. So y'all, this stuff is super, super durable. There we have it. Really good to have another project done. Y'all, this Duratex is awesome. Definitely strongly recommend it. Now, Duratex did not pay me to say this. They did not send me this stuff. I totally bought this myself, so no outside input. I just know it is great, great stuff, and I wanted to show y'all my experience with it. So Duratex, you make a great product. Well, Basehead family, that's gonna do it for this video. Really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Y'all are the reason I am able to do what I do, so thank you so, so much. Guys, that's it. Stay tuned for the next video coming up soon. But remember, as always, keep basing on.